Hi there guys, I just wanted to make a quick video talking about the Death Adder V3 from Razer that released recently and mainly what my problems with it are because even though I think this is a pretty good mouse overall and I find it's on my desk a lot um, these days, I think it has clear problems and shortcomings compared to Razer's competitors for this type of ergo shape. And uh, I think it could be a lot better than it is. I, I ha uh, There are things about it that just really irritate me um, that I, I haven't seen that many people talk about. So anyway, um, for this, I generally think Razer did a fairly good job in terms of just making like a, a, a really solid ergo. One of my problems is that uh, compared to the, like the old Death Adder V2, um, I personally find the shape a little bit more comfortable, and I think that maybe is just because I have possibly freakishly wide hands compared to the average person. I do think this shape is better uh, if you are claw gripping. I find it more comfortable for that. But for a sort of relaxed fingertip grip or palm grip, I have a preference for the V2. And I think that's just because compared to other ergos like the EC2... Um, or the Death Adder V3, it is wider. And specifically, I have a preference the way this back hump is shaped, where um, it sort of sits your hand down further back, and it's wide enough in the rightmost direction that I don't feel like my fingers want to wrap under. Like, I find on more narrow ergos like the EC2, less so the Death Adder V3, but on, on smaller ergos or more narrow ergos, ergos, I almost feel like my hands want to wrap under. Um, this is somewhere in between, though, the EC1 and the EC2 in size, so that may not be an issue for you. Um, comparatively, though, this is a much lighter mouse, and I like that they went with the unibody shell, or the pseudo unibody shell compared to this. I also love the detail of, uh, they sort of have a tilt ledge where your finger slides onto the button, and it feels sort of rubberized, almost like the super light shell material, specifically right under those, uh, on that, that side button tilt. That is a really thoughtful detail that I greatly appreciate. But um, one of my issues with this shape is I wish that they had done what they did with the G502, where on that mouse, the right click extends a little bit further than the left click. And what that lets you do is it lets you have this finger ledge here go farther. That's useful, especially on a more narrow design, because some people don't like to tilt grip the mouse. They like to hold it dead on, where they sort of align these fingers to the hump. And uh, you can see when I do that, that uh, my fingers come off the edge here of this ledge. In fact, you can see that this ledge doesn't even go quite as far as the leftmost side, which I find really weird as a decision, because no grip type I throw at this is ever going to have my finger being like positioned really far forward here, but there are a lot I can use where my finger comes off the edge here, and especially because Razer does not round their corners the way that Vaxi or Zowie does, I just don't think it feels very good when you have a finger that rests on this hard edge. So what I would like to see them change shape-wise uh, on the next one is even if they leave everything else the same, I would like them to maybe lengthen this ledge out a bit, or um, even if they don't actually change the... Uh, the mouse dimensions, um, they could, I mean, you could see here, they, they basically have room that it could keep going, even if they keep the click the same length. Um, but I think that would help a lot because if you are someone that holds the mouse that way, it just doesn't feel great having these sharp corners. I would round them off like Zowie does. It's just the thoughtful thing they do. The other thing that I noticed was, so a lot of mice have these sort of ledges at the bottom, and I think it's just part of the construction where they are sort of connecting the top piece of the shell to the bottom. Um, on Zowie or Vaxi Mouse, though, they seem to be smaller and they seem to be more rounded. So you kind of get the, the face goes further down and you don't feel this ledge as much. At first, I thought what they were doing with this was trying to have like a ledge that would catch your fingers to stop them from dragging on the pad. But uh, I don't I don't actually think it has that effect. I would personally like to see them make this ledge uh, smaller and then round it off like Zowie and Vaxi do. So in general, I think that would make this shape feel better to me. I, I've kind of grown to be annoyed when I feel this ledge or, or certainly this corner. Um, maybe this is subjective, but for me, I think what I would have preferred shape-wise is to have the peak mouse hump maybe sit a hair lower, pull this uh, 
this curve on the left in just a hair and then make it wider in the rightmost direction. That would be my preference. But even if they don't change that, I, I think it really doesn't hurt anything for them to lengthen out the finger ledge because for a lot of grip types, that's, that's going to change nothing, basically. I also would prefer if they had a uh, DPI or a rebindable button in between these clicks. I think they definitely have room here. And they actually did have that on the V2, though I think the V2 implementation is, is a bit flawed because I don't like the feeling of having my finger kind of cross over this, this big bar. And I think it would have been a lot better if they shortened up this giant black bar till it's just the size of the buttons and pushed up against the wheel. I would have preferred that personally. I think that uh, would be a lot more elegant. I don't even need two necessarily. I don't switch my DPI in real time in game, but I rebind it so that I can like have a toggle mute in Discord or so that I can like have it bound to open the map in games, things like that. Even if that adds like a few grams of weight, I, I certainly think that's worth doing. Uh, I would like them to. Um, but outside of the shape and the uh, harsh, harsh corners and edges that they sort of do, um, I think that the click feel on both of these is not great, to be perfectly honest. If you compare it to the Vaxi Outset, which has really nice split trigger switches in terms of just the consistent click feel they have, or something like the EC2-C, which I also think has fantastic feeling clicks, these clicks feel kind of meh. And um, just from a quality control standpoint as well. So I've owned three of these actually. I've had two wireless, one of which I returned, and then I have the one wired and the one wireless. I'm using the wired right now just because I want to use the uh, 4000 hertz pulling, um, but the there has been build quality variation on each unit. So the one I sent back, I sent back because it had the side flex on the shell, and then the back side button turned out really bad on that unit for whatever reason, where it would kind of like tilt up into the shell and it didn't feel right. Um, on this unit, it turned out a lot better overall, like the side buttons are both perfect on this unit. And they, they feel really good, the side buttons. And then on the Death Adder V2, the side buttons also feel really good. So I think they have generally done a great job with that. But, uh, and then the right click turned out fine on this unit as well. Uh, not as good as the clicks on the Outset AX or the EC2-C, which use mechanical clicks, and these are opticals. But I still think the uh, right click in particular here turned out pretty good. The left click on this unit, and this is not true for my wireless unit, turned out really bad. It's super shallow. It, it barely moves, and it doesn't feel very good. That is not true for my other unit, where the left click turned out feeling a lot better. Um, and then I also had on... Um, I also had on that first unit the mouse feet were crooked like they were glued on crooked when I took them out of the box um, which isn't something that should happen uh, I think for the wired unit it kind of would be cool to have the uh, mouse feet go all the way across like it did on the v2 but I think it's because they just kind of reuse the layout from the wireless unit where they have a hardware that goes here so that's not really a deal breaker or anything like that but uh, I also think the mouse wheel, the mouse wheel on the V2 actually feels a lot better to me than on the V3. Um, I do think that these, they're going for like a hybrid wheel. I have a strong preference for the EC2-C wheel where it's like super notchy and it feels like you're pressing a button. And what I also like about those wheels is when you middle click on something like an EC2-C wheel, I never accidentally misscroll the wheel when I am doing that. With more, like with less notchy, smoother wheels, I find that's kind of a common problem and it's just a pet peeve of mine that really bugs me. I think that the Death Adder V3 wheel, it feels flimsy and hollow to me. I don't even think it feels as good as the V2 wheel, which feels a lot more solid. Um, so I think on the fronts of the clicks, so they use opticals and I think they use opticals one because there is slightly less latency and slightly less, and they don't have to worry about debounce delay. And um, just from a hardware lasting standpoint, I think there are advantages to opticals in terms of like how many clicks they're rated for and things like that. That's all well and good, but these don't feel very good. And I don't even think, I don't even buy that it's the optical versus mechanical problem because, um, you know, the Superlight has opticals, if I remember correctly. I mean, I 
Mm, am I wrong about that? But those felt great to me on their implementation. So I just think the click feel could be way better. And I mean, these are fine, I guess. Like you can get used to them. I don't really feel like the Death Headers have ever had like a great click feel. But uh, I think the wheel, the wheel and the clicks would be an area of improvement. Um, the other problem I have is with the cable, actually. So the cable on the Death Adder V3 wired um, is a lot worse than the cable on the V2, where the V2 cable, their old Speedflex, I find to be a lot more flexible. I, I find you can, like, fold it and it stays out of your way really well. And I think they probably had to make this cable thicker for 4,000, 8,000 hertz pulling. So that's probably, that's probably it. Uh, it's not like an unbearable cable like the outset cable was, which is like a stick, but it is noticeably worse, I would say, than the V2 cable in terms of just flexibility and not getting twisted up and staying out of your way. Uh, this cable does bother me. It's not as good as the EC2-C cable. It's not as good as the uh, old Speedflex cable from, from the Death Adder V2. So, uh, but the nice, you know, the higher pulling rate is nice, though, I gotta say. And I think what they did here is this is just the, the charge cable, basically, for the wireless version. And um, it is shorter as well than the cable that came with the V2. So that's kind of disappointing. I think that's an area they could do better in as well. But uh, overall, it is a very light mouse. And I like the unibody shell. The side buttons on this unit are great. Um, I just think it's, it's a mouse that is not as well polished in its execution as something like the EC2-C to me. I prefer the shape on the EC2-C. And one thing is... This hump width is actually identical if you go to the shape compare tools between the EC2 and the Death Adder V3. The Death Adder V3 is longer though, so you kind of get like a more substantial hump and it feels taller in your hand. Uh, and I find that for someone like me, I really just desperately want an EC 1.5 or like an EC 2L. Like just give me the EC2 but wider in the rightmost direction. And uh, I think I'd be a very happy camper because the EC1 is massive and just feels too big to me. But uh, so this is kind of like one of the better options in that middle ground zone. But I, I, I overall think that uh, Zowie has a, a more thoughtful shape personally. And I think their click feels better. I think their wheel is better. Um, they also have like a really nice detail on the, the Zowie mice where they tilt this cable up. I like that because it just sort of like keeps the cable from dragging on the pad here. It's just a thoughtful, nice detail that they do. So overall, I do think it's a good mouse. I just think it could be better. So I, I, I wouldn't say I'm exactly happy with it. I also think their shell material encoding is, I don't know if lazy is the right word for it. I'm not a fan of it. So it's very common for mice to do this thing where their shells are just cheap feeling, perfectly smooth plastic with like a sticky or gluey coating. Even, even Zowie does that. And I, I don't like it. I'm not a fan of it. The white wireless unit for the Death Adder V3 actually has like a way better shell material encoding to, to my perception than the wired version where it's on that one. It's more like a chalky, almost matte material, which I think feels really good on the super light. They use like a uh, rubberized soft touch plastic, which feels like some of the materials they use in high-end smartphones, things like that. I really appreciate when mice go out of their way to put effort into what your hand is touching because it does really add to how nice it feels to use the mouse. Even the Death Adder V2, or certainly the V2 Pro, um, I think has a approach to this I prefer, where they have like the matte plastic where it's textured on the top. And then they have those rubber uh, side grips that are part of the shell. And on the Pro, it's you know even better because they, they apply this material basically to this entire left and right face. I think that feels really good. And I'm generally quite a, a fan of that. So I, I'm just kind of bummed because I, I'm not a fan at all of the sort of cheap, perfectly smooth feeling plastic. I, you know, the, the white unit has like a really cool material. So I wish they had used that instead of this. Uh, and ideally the super light actually has my favorite approach to that. So I wish that more mice would adopt that solution. But, um, anyway, that's what I think. Uh, at the very least, I would like to see them kind of lengthen this ledge out a bit and then round these corners more like the Zowie or Vaxi approach. And then I would like to see this ledge down here, probably not be as big and then round it as well. And I think that that would just feel a lot, a lot nicer to me. Um, 
so yeah, I guess that's my take on what my, my issues are with this. I think it is a good mouse, but it, it really isn't a death adder at all. Like it's, it's so weird to me that, you know, if you're somebody that loves the death adder shape, you might not like this one. I mean, it, it really depends on how you hold the mouse. You know, for, for this type of grip where I'm taking my fingers, I'm just sort of aligning to the peak mouse hump and resting my hands down, I find this shape more comfortable. It, it's why I bought a V2 Pro, actually, at this point. And uh, so, you know, I think this is pretty good. But it could be better, and it should be better. And, you know, I can get... I've had a hard time getting used to this, to be honest. But uh, anyway, that's what I think. Thanks for your time, and have a good one, guys.